everyone. Thank you so much for being a part of this time of worship, this fourth Sunday of Advent. So glad that you are a part, however you're joining us today. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out as we continue through this season of Advent and we approach this special time of the year when we celebrate the birth of Jesus on Christmas Eve, beginning at 7 o'clock, you can tune in and be a part of our candlelight worship service. You can tune in through our website, warsawfumc.org, through our Facebook page and the YouTube channel. You can also be a part of worship if you're listening on Oldies 101, WIOE. You can tune in at 11 p.m. Uh, and be a part of the broadcast at that time. One of the things that we're going to do during this time, this crazy time of physical distancing, is we're going to give you the opportunity to connect during that 7 o'clock time through Zoom and be a part of worship with your church family, with those that will be gathering and are part of that worship service. So what we're gonna do is make available to you the link that you can join in on uh, Zoom. That link is available to you in the worship folder that you should be able to find on our website. Again, warsawfumc.org. We'll also be emailing that link out to the church family, those that have an email address so that you can be aware of that. One thing I wanted to point out, you can be a part of that Zoom conversation and connection uh, through the telephone. You do not need internet access to be able to participate on Zoom. And there'll be some information about how you can call in on your phone and be a part of that time of connecting together. One of the things that we uh, wanted to do today in our time of worship is to uh, present a special gift to a special lady. 2020 has been a rough year. Many of us have felt the effects of the difficulties that we've faced this year. One of the difficulties that we face this year as a church is the reality that two of our vital staff members who've been a part of our church uh, for a number of years, serving in the ways that they've served, will be stepping down from their roles. Uh, Mandy Bailey will be stepping down from her role as our children's ministry director beginning the first of the year. Um, and one of our staff persons will be stepping down not only from her role, but she and her husband will be moving out of the community. Uh, and that special person is Deb Bishop, who's here with us today. And uh, we want to take a moment um, to say a huge, huge thank you. And thank you just seems so small um, to Deb Bishop for her service to our church, to our community, and the so many different ways that she's done that. Uh, Deb has participated in worship uh, in a number of different ways over 20 plus years, I believe. She has led our praise team at the Connection Service uh, now for six years, I think it's been roughly six, seven years. Um, and Deb has given so much in so many different ways, helping out with our community closet and our kitchen ministry on Wednesdays, uh, going with youth on mission trips. Um, and I'm getting myself in trouble because I don't have a clue because I haven't been here long enough to know all of the different ways that Deb Bishop has impacted this church and this community. Um, so we want to take a moment during this time now, present Deb with a special gift and token of her service to this church and community, and to say a huge, huge thank you. We love you, Deb, and we appreciate you so much. And we're going to miss you and Brad both um, as you make your move down to Florida. Thank you, Deb, for your service, your love, and bless you.
For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Today we light the angel's candle, representing the important message of God's love coming to us in the person of Jesus. Good morning. It's great to be with you. I don't know about you, but I am very excited for the holidays. It is right around the corner. I love this time of year with Christmas cards and Christmas songs and just all things pointing towards Jesus. And with Jesus comes so much light. And we have had a lot of darkness in this year of 2020. And it's time to bring the light. So I want to talk about something that lights up the night, and that is lightning bugs. Lightning bugs are such cool creatures, right? We go out into the evening and collect them, and sometimes we put them in jars. That's a really neat thing to be able to watch lightning bugs in jars, right? But the only problem is, if they're in a jar, their light can't get out. Although it's neat to keep them in jars, it is even more wonderful to let them loose, to let them fly through the sky, to let their light soar through the night air where we can see them all across the field. We are kind of like those lightning bugs. We certainly can keep our light packaged up within us and not share it with anyone, but that is not what God wants us to do. God sent Jesus to live on earth so that we might learn from him, so that we might understand how to give our light to others, just like Jesus did. So I'd like to pray that we might be able to go out into the world and do that, that sharing of light with others. So let's pray about that. Lord, thank you so much for just influencing us and empowering us and giving us the courage to go out into the world and share your light with others. Help us to be the light by being kind, by offering our help, by offering our love, by offering all that we have for others. We pray that you would give us that courage and help us in the weeks and months to come to bring light into a world that can sometimes be dark. We thank you for all that you do and we love you, God, amen. As we go to the Lord in prayer today, I'm gonna to invite you to spend some time in silence, lifting up those things that are on your heart and in your mind. And then we'll follow with some prayers that I will pray, and then I'll invite you to join again as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Holy God, we are in awe of you, of who you are, of your presence that is among us, your presence that brings hope and life. And we thank you, Lord, as we celebrate this special time of the year, this season of Christmas, this season of Advent, Lord, that we know that you have come, you've dwelt among us, you've taken on human flesh, and God, that you know you've experienced what it's like to be human. And thank you, Lord, that as you walk this earth and as you experience the joys the sorrows. Lord, thank you that you know what it's like. And God, that you walk with us through seasons of incredible joy and seasons of pain. And God, thank you for meeting us. Lord, your promises where two or more are gathered in the name of Jesus, you are right there in their midst. So God, we thank you. Lord, even as we gather in this unique way that we've had to do this, Lord, thank you that you meet us right where we are, wherever we are. God, we thank you for the many, many blessings that you have poured out into our lives. God, we thank you for the love that you have poured out through people in our lives, through situations that we've been in. God, we thank you for the strength that you've given us in situations where we didn't think we could get through them. And Lord, as we look back on those times, we can see your hand holding us, guiding us, and we, we are grateful for that. 
God, some of us may be in times that are great, greatly difficult right now and are looking for your hands that are holding, are looking for your hand that guides. And Lord, we lift each one of those that are suffering up right now. God, may they know your very powerful presence with them. Lord, those that need your healing touch, may they experience your healing grace. Those who need guidance, Lord, may they sense your guiding spirit. And God, those who are facing incredible challenges in life right now, God, may they know the very presence of Emmanuel, God with us, with them right now. God, we are grateful for the many, many people who are serving faithfully right now in so many different ways. God, thank you for our health care providers in nursing homes and clinics and hospitals, facilities all over our country and all over the world, Lord, that are trying to provide help and healing to those in need. And God, we ask that you would be with them. God, give them strength, give them wisdom and guidance. Lord, help them to know your strong presence with them as they serve. God, there are many who serve in our local communities during this uh, Christmas season where they have to work long, hard hours. And God, we thank you for the work that they do. We pray for our first responders. We pray for those in colder climates that are having to clear roads. We pray for those, Lord, who serve in so many different ways to bless our communities. And God, we ask that you would give them strength. God, that you would bless them and guide them. God, as we continue to lift these prayers to you, Lord, I know that there are some who have lost loved ones during this season. God, losing loved ones is hard any time. But Lord, especially during this season, would you hold these individuals, these families very close to you? God, may they know the very strong presence of Jesus, light of the world, giving them hope and encouragement, and strength, and that love that is so desperately needed in those times. God, as we look around our world, we see there are places around our world where there's great suffering. And God, it can seem like hopelessness and despair has gripped these places. And God, we ask that the light of Jesus would shine into those places as well. God, bringing hope and life, bringing justice and freedom. God, bringing nourishment where that's needed. And God, we thank you for the many precious saints who have gone out to serve in these places offering the hope of Jesus, offering love in so many different ways. God, we ask that you would bless them, and God, that you would guide them in that important work that they do. God, as we celebrate this season of Christmas, thank you, Lord, for those we are close to. God, thank you for family. Thank you for friends. Perhaps we're not able to gather with those that we're close to during this season, but Lord, we're grateful for the blessing that they are to us, and we ask that you would place your hand of blessing upon them, God, that they would know your love surrounding them, supporting them through this time. And God, as we gather as a community, as we gather as people of faith on Christmas Eve, Lord, thank you for that opportunity to remember why we even celebrate this special time, and that is because of Jesus. God, as we continue to lift these prayers to you, we lift the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Scripture reading today is John 1, 1 through 5, 14, the New Living Translation. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. The Word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. So we continue to walk through this season of Advent, looking at how God has come to be with us in the person of Jesus. This first Sunday of Advent, we looked at Jesus as Messiah, the King of Kings who has come to rule and to reign, to bring the kingdom of God among his people. The next week, we looked at Jesus as our Savior, God stepping down into humanity's darkness and sinfulness and brokenness to offer the light and the hope that we have in him and to bring salvation as promised by the prophets in the Old Testament. Last week we talked about Emmanuel, which that word means God with us, and how God is with us in so many different ways, and the importance of Emmanuel, God with us. Today we're gonna be talking about Jesus as the light of the world as we continue this journey um, with some help from Adam Hamilton's uh, Advent devotional incarnation. We'll be looking at how Jesus has come into this world, Emmanuel, God with us, to bring the light that God has to bring hope and encouragement to us. Before I go any further, though, let's pray. God, we thank you for your holy word. Lord, as we have heard scripture through word, through song today, as we've worshiped, Lord, I pray that you would continue to speak to us in powerful ways through your holy word. And Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be pleasing in your sight, our great rock and Redeemer. Amen. Today we're looking at a scripture out of the Gospel of John. We've taken a look um, as we've gone through the Advent season. We've looked at the prophecies from the Old Testament. Uh, We jumped into an epistle, one of the New Testament scriptures where Paul was writing um, about how Jesus is our Savior. Last week we looked at the Gospel of Matthew and we saw Matthew's account of how Jesus came into this world, looking at the lineage leading up to Joseph. This week, we're going to be looking at, this fourth week of Advent, the Gospel of John. John's Gospel, a lot of times, doesn't get a lot of publication during Christmas because we don't have the fuzzy, warm feeling of Jesus in the manger, of Joseph and Mary, and some of the relationship that we see in this story of Christmas as we celebrate those stories, especially that come out of the Gospel of Luke and Matthew. And so this week, we're gonna, we've looked at this uh, scripture reading from John and how God has stepped into our world to bring light, to bring hope through the word. And you see John's wording here. He says, the word became flesh and made his home among us. And it may sound kind of weird to talk about the word uh, coming to make its home or his home here in our midst. And as, as he talks about the word, we go way back to the creation story where God spoke into existence creation. And so John tapping into some of the language from Genesis of the word being spoken, and as the word is spoken, it's created. John taps into that to talk about how God has come into the creation that God has, has put together through the word, 
and connects the word that was spoken at creation that created everything, makes the connection between that and Emmanuel, Jesus, who has come into the world. And it's just an incredible picture. And, and perhaps we lose some of that essence uh, detached from what took place in the Old Testament. That's why the Old Testament is so important for us as believers in Jesus, because so much of what the Old Testament does is gives us the framework and reminds us of God's presence all throughout history of humanity. And so John's gospel begins with the word became human, became flesh, put on flesh and bones and lived, tabernacled, dwelt, made his home among us. What an incredible story that is. And I imagine to those first century Christians, those first century Jewish uh, persons that heard that, the thought of that was mind blowing. And you know, we read over that now, and I read over that now and think, yeah, that's, that's what happened. The word became flesh. No, the word became flesh. The word, the very presence of God there at the very start. And as John reminds the reader, even before creation, the word was present. And now that word has stepped into our world to offer us the hope that we so desperately need. John also uses a lot of imagery with light and darkness. And, you know, we look at that in the Gospel of John, but, but if you go throughout Scripture, beginning in Genesis with the creation account, how does that start? There was complete darkness. And God spoke into the darkness and light came into that darkness. And so we see this contrast throughout Scripture, beginning in Genesis, between light and darkness. And you follow Scripture all through the Old Testament into the New Testament, and you see constantly these references to the image of light and darkness. Even on the last book of the Bible, as we read through Revelation, we see that imagery as, as the gospel, or as the, the writer of, of Revelation says, there will be no more darkness, and the very presence of God will provide light for us. And so as John picks up on this theme of light and darkness, he brings us into his gospel opening. And these gospel openings were hugely important to the gospel writer because it sets the stage for what they're going to share through their story of the gospel. And so John gives this image of light and darkness. Darkness representing sin, brokenness, loneliness, isolation, separation. Darkness representing hatred, unforgiveness, sickness, all of those things that we think of that are just yuck. And John contrasts that with the coming of Emmanuel, the word become flesh. He contrasts that with the incredible light that God pours in through Jesus, the light that brings hope, that brings salvation, that brings healing, that sets things right. When I say the word sin, when I talk about darkness, this word sin simply means missing the mark. It means missing the intended outcome, if you will. And so as John makes this comparison between dark and light, the darkness being sin, sin and darkness and brokenness, missing the mark. What is that mark that John talks about with darkness? What, is, what does scripture talk about when it talks about darkness and sin? Here's what it talks about. Because in my mind, sometimes I think sin, darkness, all of that is just the bad stuff that I do, the bad things I choose to do, right? Um, I got up this morning, and I had a cruddy, cruddy attitude. And I carried that attitude. I fed that attitude throughout the day. And by the end of the day, I had waylaid my family, my coworkers. I waylaid everybody that I came in contact with just because I had this cruddy attitude, and I carried it with me all day. And I feel horrible about it, looking back on it. It's much, much more than that. Maybe the thought is, you know, there's a habit that I have that's not good for me. It's not good for my family. It's not good for my work. It's not good at all. And I keep falling back into that habit, sin, brokenness. Not that. Those are outcomes. Those are results of sin and darkness and brokenness that John's talking about, the light entering into. But they are not it. You know what it is? The it is that God has stepped into our humanity to bring the light that we so desperately need. The it is separation from relationship with God. That simple. When our relationship with God is broken, think about it. 
Think about your relationships with people that are significant in your life. And this is a big leap because our relationship with God pales. These other relationships pale in comparison to our relationship with God. But when there's an issue with somebody that we are close to, you think about it, a sibling, a parent, a spouse, um, somebody that we are really close to, that we love dearly, something comes between us and there's a wedge and we feel it. And so our whole disposition changes, our, our, the way that we think about things, the way we react to things, the way that we treat other people, the way that we do things completely gets messed up. That just gives a small glimmer of what darkness does. It's not about those nitpicky little things in our lives that we do, that we look at and we think, oh, that's bad. It's much more than that. It's all about the relationship between us and the God who created us. And as God steps into our darkness, our brokenness, our separation from God, there was only one way that God could restore that relationship. How many times have you, when you've gone through something difficult, thought, God, where are you? I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed and nothing seems to change. God, where in the world are you? If that's you, you're in very good company. The psalmist cried out so many different times throughout the psalms. You can read in the psalms in the Bible. The psalmist cried out, God, where are you? People who are just awful are being successful, while those who are faithful and doing good are falling apart. God, where are you? Why do you do what you do? God, where are you? And as the scriptures remind us over and over again, the light steps into the darkness to bring hope, to bring healing, and even more than that, to bring the very presence of God to be with us, to walk with us through whatever it is that we're dealing with. You know what my problem is? Oftentimes I don't recognize it when I'm walking in the crud. When I'm walking through a dark situation, you think about that, walking through a dark situation, I'm not even aware of God's presence there because the darkness is closing in. If you've ever been inside of a cave, maybe you've been in a cave, you've been spelunking, um, maybe you haven't, but if you can just imagine absolute pitch darkness, you can't see your hand in front of your face. If you've ever been in a cave and tried to do that without any light shining, but you turn that flashlight or that lantern on, boom, the place lights up. And the very, very darkness that once enshrouded you has been lifted. It doesn't mean the darkness isn't still there. You can look around the periphery of your light and you can see it, but the darkness has been lifted. Similarly, God's presence stepping down into our darkness. And this is the imagery that John is using in his gospel as he says the light has shone in the darkness and the darkness can't put it out. Some other translations say the darkness can't comprehend it or the darkness can't accept it. And you think about that, light and darkness, they don't get along well, do they? They create all kinds of things, shadows. And, and when the light comes into the darkness, the darkness has to, has to go. But maybe you're in the middle of a dark place. And maybe you're sensing that there's just darkness all around, like you would be in a cave with no light. It is for you. It is for all of us that God has stepped down. Emmanuel, God with us. The word become flesh, step down into our darkness. And again, the darkness, not just being sin, not just being our bad habits, not just being uh, something I said yesterday I wish I hadn't said, but at the very core of it, our relationship with God. And as was read in our call to worship just a moment ago, God so much loves this world that God created and again, I go back to creation as God spoke it into existence. It wasn't just some project that God thought, oh, it'd be interesting to create a world. It is interesting, but it's much more than that. God so loves the world that he created, that he gave. He gave. And sometimes we think when he, when he says he gave his only begotten son, that we think, oh yeah, he died on the cross for us. But think about this, God stepping into the darkness of creation in human flesh God gave his one and only begotten son stepping into our darkness our sin our brokenness to bring the light of God that's what that scripture speaks to 
It has everything to do with our relationship with God first, and from there, our relationship with ourselves, with those around us, with our world around us. And it plays out in so many different ways as we go out into our world. And you know what we get to do? You know what's cool about what we get to do? Is we get to share that light with those around us. So as we approach Christmas Day, and as we think about Christmas Eve and all of those bright candles that will shine, we won't be able to do that together in a room. Boy, that's an incredible scene. But you know what we can do? We can take that light, the light of God's presence through Jesus, stepped into our world. We can take that light, and we can let that light shine before others. Not so that they'll look at the light and say, wow, you're pretty, you're pretty awesome. <laughs> you're a pretty cool person because you got light. No, what the light does, just like a light attracts moths, what that light will do is will draw people into that relationship that every single one of us long for with God. And that's my hope for us during this Christmas time as we go through this special time with, hopefully, with some of our family, as we go through this special time of celebration, that we won't get distracted by all of the darkness. Darkness out there, darkness in here. But that we will recognize the light of God's presence in the midst of darkness. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, become flesh and step down into our darkness to bring light and to bring hope. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you. You didn't have to do it, but you chose to do it. Jesus, you who existed before everything, with the Father. As the scriptures remind us, you chose to take on human flesh to make your home with us, to display the very love and grace and truth and glory and light of the very presence of God among us, to bring light so that we can be made whole and new, to bring light so that that relationship that we, every one of us, whether we're aware of it or not, long for, to know God and to walk closely with God and to experience that incredible relationship with God so that we can once again have that. Thank you. God, I pray that that, that truth of your light come into this world would shine brightly within us and God, that that would be something that would shine forth from us and bring that hope that is so desperately needed in our dark world. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.
thank you so much for coming and being a part of this time together in worship. I want to invite you this Thursday, beginning at 7 o'clock, on our church website, WarsawFUMC.org, YouTube, Facebook, and then 11 o'clock on Oldies 101 on WIOE to tune in and be a part of that special time as we celebrate on Christmas Eve. Now go in that wonderful grace that is Jesus, the light of this world, and allow that light to shine in you and shine through you as you go. God bless you.